guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a pretty simple, interesting game from a company called Zafty Games. It's called Somnium Rise of Lapita. It is for two to four players, takes about 15 to 30 minutes to play. It's for ages 12 and up. In the game Somnium, you're basically going to get three cards in your hand, and on your turn you're going to play one of those cards. Those cards are going to give you victory points if you have enough points at the end of the game to uh, to uh, win, or at the end of your turn to win, you instantly just win the game. Pretty simple and straightforward. There are event cards you can play as well as reoccurring abilities that once you place them on your board, you can go ahead and utilize. Some of them are going to give you more, multiple points, others will let you destroy cards in play. And in general, after you've played those cards, you're just going to gain the influence and keep those points on, on your side of the field, but you can lose them as well. Uh, it probably could play more, to four, more than four players if you bought an extra copy of the game, or if you wanted to skip it to five, you might be able to pull it off as well. Straightforward, simple simple game. Let's take a look at it down below and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So here we have Somnium Rise of Laputa by Zafti Games and what you're basically doing is you're playing as a monarch that has found the floating city of Laputa and you're trying to use your influence to convince nobles and whatnot to get gather more influence and if you can get 20 by the end of the game you're going to win. Everybody starts with three cards. You're going to take a deck and shuffle it up and put your influence somewhere where everybody can reach. These are the rules and this is of course the box. When you start the game you're just going to simply choose a player and they're going to look at their hand and play a card. There's three different types of cards. You're going to have have cards that as they stay in play are going to give you something like this guy here, the miner. At the start of your turn, you're going to gain one influence. And then cards like the Propagandist, when you play it, it's just going to have a simple effect that takes place and then it just stays there. There's also cards like this, which is an event, and it just says once you play it, uh, it takes effect. That target opponent loses three influence. So uh, on your turn, you're going to simply play one of these cards that you want in your hand. Maybe I'll play the Aristocrat. That's going to give me four points. You're going to take four points from the pool, and that's four out of 20 to help you win the game. Very, very, very simple. This is the number of influence you take, and then this is whether or not it's going to have a lasting effect or not. After that, you'll draw a card and simply set your hand aside, and the next player is going to get to go. Now, this card here will let you have a player lose three points. This card here is going to let you uh, gain one point for every diplomat in play, and there's only one character in play, and that's the aristocrat. And this one here is the alchemist. P play a card from the discard pile. Pretty useful, but we'll go ahead and save that. This isn't give a loss of points, so we're going to go ahead and try and lower a player's point count, or of course, uh, influence count. So he'll lose three points. This will go to the graveyard and a new card will get drawn for this player. Next player's turn, they're going to simply look at their hand. Wow. Destroy any card. Target opponent loses three. Target opponent loses two and you gain two. Well, there's not a lot of options here. I guess he'll go ahead and do this one. Target opponent will lose two. He only has one. And then this player will gain two. Putting a card back into his hand, the next player is going to get to go. Let's play the miner out there. It's going to give him one influence and every turn he's going to score another influence. And the game continues like so. Pretty simple, right? Play the diplomat here. He'll gain one and every time, uh, and then he gains one for every diplomat, but there's no other diplomats, so not as powerful, but it does get more powerful as the game goes on, of course. So the next player over here, he's got something interesting. He's got the propagandist that'll score him a point, and that can make somebody lose a point. And uh, now it's this player's turn. This card, of course, has a lasting effect, so he'll just gain one influence instantaneously. And now he can go ahead and play something like, let's play a propagandist. Opponents are going to lose one, so these guys are going to lose one point. And uh, it continues like so. And that's the basic idea of the game. Your tableau is going to get larger and larger with more and more people. Players are going to destroy creature or characters. So, for instance, where's the guy who's got the cool thing? Destroy any card. Getting rid of that minor is probably a good idea, right? And uh, then as, as soon as somebody hits 20 points, the coveted 20 uh, influence, they're going to win the game of Somnium Rise of Lapita. Pretty simple, right? All right, let's talk about it. So I think you understand how to play Somnium Rise of Lapita. Pretty simple. Three cards, play a card, draw a card, get to 20 influence, win the game. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. It takes about 10 seconds to explain how it's played. And for anybody who uh, knows how to play board games, this is going to be an easy jump into. It's an easy gateway game as well. And it's also an easy game to fill in the time between other larger games or simply to just pull out really quick before you go and do something. Uh, when I first saw this game, I wasn't sure what to expect. It has uh, artwork similar to games uh, from the level 99 branch. I do love their artwork and I do love the artwork for this game as well. It has really great high quality anime artwork as my cameraman said. Um, I, but when I first was reading the rules and going through the cards I was like there's not a lot to it. You're playing a card passing your turn and that's that's it. Get to 20 influence. Surprisingly, I really, really enjoyed it. In fact, I played this multiple, multiple times with multiple people after playing enough to know whether or not and I enjoyed it, and I continue to play it to this day because I really, really enjoy the fact that I can just pull this game out really quick, show them how it's played, we go through it, we have a good time, and then we're done, we wrap it up and do something else. Uh, I, 
I, it's hard to explain why I enjoy this game, but I guess it's because of the fact that uh, though it is simplistic in nature, there are choices in your hand, and those choices are basically actions that change as your turn goes on. You're able to play additional actions with certain cards as the event cards that affect players in a negative or positive way, and there's certain combinations of cards that are pretty cool, like get, gathering certain types of the characters can actually have you win the game, so there's separate win conditions in the game. Those characters like the Spy that lets you play a card from an opponent's hand, so when you know a an opponent has a very juicy hand because they drew new cards or something like that, you can utilize the spy. You've got things like Call to Arms, which could be an instant game winner if, via using stuff from your tableau, which is gaining a uh, victory point or an influence for every card you have in play in your tableau. So even putting garbage cards out there slowly but surely, no one wants to get rid of them because they're not very useful. And then you play Call to Arms and that's going to gather you 10 points. Bam, game winner, right? So there is those moments where you're just like... I win. And also, everyone is very, very close to this game. It's always really close because everyone's picking on everybody just a little bit to keep everybody within the loop. It feels like Munchkin, but there's no dreaded level 9 where you're simply going to, uh, pfft, you're out because you hit level 9, level nine first and you're not going to win. Instead, this one is actually going to have you just simply uh, win the game via your own little skills of the cards you have in hand as well as how your opponents choose to pick on players based on what they think and they know from the information they have gathered via the cards they have played. Um, overall, this is a very solid little game. It's very simple. So those of you who do not like simple games or uh, quick games, those of you who want a little more intense strategy are probably not going to enjoy Somnium Rise of Lapita. But if you do like quick filler games with a decent style of artwork and you do like the, it's, all the quality is very nice, Zafti has produced a, an amazing little game here. So it's probably one of my favorites, if not my current current favorite with them, um, although I do like Ginger, Ginger Dead House, even though it's random, and um, I, I, they have a pixel game that's pretty sweet as well that I keep seeing but haven't played yet. Somni and Rise of Laputa is a good choice to pick up if you like a quick gateway game and you want to get somebody else into it. It's great for younger people as well. Definitely check out if you're interested in the description below. Alright, that's all I got. <laughs>